live NFL trivia every Wednesday night on Twitch at 9 p.m. Eastern. Come show off your football knowledge for a chance to win cash prizes. Check the link in the description to find out more. And now, on with our feature presentation. Last week, I made a video about the 1995 CarQuest Bowl, and how the title sponsor to the game, CarQuest, did not want West Virginia to play in it, and tried to implement restrictions, as unsuccessful as they were, to prevent the Mountaineers from playing in the game. If you want to learn more about that fiasco, click the card in the upper right corner. However, in fairness to the CarQuest Bowl, the committee that decided who was going to play in the game was unanimous in wanting West Virginia to play in it. It was only when the title sponsor interfered that there was a problem. But in terms of the football heads who knew what they were talking about, it was not an issue. The same could not be said about the 1997 Liberty Bowl, however. Because in another incident involving a Big East school, the selection committee really did not want to take Pitt. And I don't mean that they preferred one team, but they were fine with Pitt, or it was a toss-up where the room was split on who to invite. I mean that this bowl requested a trade with another bowl game to try and do everything possible to not have Pitt play in the Liberty Bowl. It was that ugly and that fierce, and we're going to take a deep dive into the controversy today. This is the story behind the Pittsburgh Panthers, and the absolutely bizarre controversy that took place at the 1997 Liberty Bowl. Before I talk about the actual controversy in question, we need some context to understand how Pitt was playing, and why they were even invited to this bowl game in the first place. The year is 1997, and it's a brand new era in Pitt football. They've got a new logo, they've got a new head coach in Walt Harris, most recently the quarterback's coach at Ohio State, and they've got a new athletic director in Steve Peterson, with this being his first full season in charge of the department. This was a new identity for a new era, and as controversial as parts of the change were, Pitt needed a new identity after some absolutely disastrous play over the 1990s. Gone were the glory days of the late 70s and early 80s, when they were one of college football's powerhouses. Now, they were a laughingstock, having not made a bowl game since 1989, having not had a winning record since 1991, and having won just 12 games in the last four seasons, including a 1995 season two years before this, where they went 0-7 in Big East play. However, fortunately for Pitt, the times were changing, because in the first season with Walt Harris in charge, the Panthers shocked a ton of people by playing some solid football. They had multiple wins against ranked opponents, defeating a ranked Miami team at home by a final score of 21-17, and defeating a ranked Virginia Tech team at home by a final score of 30-23. They won the backyard brawl against West Virginia for the first time since 1991, and did it by beating them on their home field in triple overtime. By no means was it easy. Heck, in two of their games, including that West Virginia game, they were trailing in overtime and were facing fourth down. However, they found a way to get it done, and finished the regular season with a record of 6-5, giving them their first winning record after five straight seasons of being below 500. On top of that, they went 4-3 in Big East play, which not only gave them their first winning record in Big East play since 1991, which was the first season that the conference sponsored football, but gave them the most wins they'd ever had in conference play in a single season. By all accounts, the 1997 season for the Pitt Panthers was a success, as thanks to a great offense led by quarterback Pete Gonzalez, who led the Big East in passing yards and passing touchdowns in his final season with the program, Pitt was able to make some noise and at least somewhat return to form. And when speaking on that 1997 season, Athletic Director Steve Peterson said how proud he was of the team, and how much it meant to the school and to the city. As he said, It's the most exciting thing that's happened around here in a decade. We haven't been to a bowl since 1989. I don't think many people would have believed we could have had this kind of season. During that 1997 season, the Big East had four bowl tie-ins. And the math was incredibly simple, seeing as there were only four teams in the conference who were eligible to make it to a bowl by having at least six wins. The first bowl up was the Fiesta Bowl, which was one of the bowls as part of the Bowl Alliance, and they were taking the conference champion, Syracuse. The second bowl up was the Gator Bowl, which would take the second place team in the conference, with that being Virginia Tech. The third bowl up was the CarQuest Bowl, which would take the third place team in the conference, with that being West Virginia. I guess the fiasco that happened three seasons before was water under the bridge, seeing as CarQuest had no problem inviting them this time to take on Georgia Tech. And per the contract, the fourth and final bowl to make their pick was the Liberty Bowl. 
One of the teams already locked in was Southern Miss, as because of the 1996 agreement made by the Bowl with the conference, the conference champion of Conference USA would automatically get to play in the game. Now, it was time to pick the Big East team, and it had to be Pitt by default. And when the Liberty Bowl organizers learned that they had to take Pitt, they reacted by emphatically saying, Oh no, absolutely not. That raises the obvious question. Why did the Liberty Bowl not want Pitt playing in the game? Because right now, this was setting up to be an incredibly awkward situation. Pitt thought for sure that they were playing in the game, and understandably so. The Liberty Bowl had to take the 4th place team. Pitt was the 4th place team, and there was literally no other team in the conference that was eligible. They thought it was such a lock that not only were fans chanting Memphis after beating West Virginia in their final regular season game, which was the game that ultimately made them bowl eligible, but at a team meeting, head coach Walt Harris wore a Liberty Bowl hat and a Liberty Bowl t-shirt. For all intents and purposes, Pitt playing in the bowl game was as much of a lock as a Pac-12 team playing in a non-playoff Rose Bowl. It was a lock. And you'd think Pitt would have been invited right away. The moment that the other three bowls made their pick, and the moment we knew that Pitt was going to be the fourth place team, that was the moment that everything would be finalized, and we would officially learn that to end the year, Pitt would be walking in Memphis with their feet 10 feet off a of beal. But in a bizarre twist, Pitt wasn't invited to the game at first. Pitt was getting antsy, because they needed to know what bowl game they were playing in, so they could start preparing, practicing, and selling tickets. And the Liberty Bowl was getting antsy because they really did not want Pitt playing in their game. And the reason why the Liberty Bowl didn't want Pitt? They wanted Ole Miss. And there were a few reasons why the Bowl organizers wanted this. Number one, there was an attendance concern if they took Pitt, because they had no idea how many fans would show up. Regarding attendance, there were probably a good chunk of Pitt fans who never even considered going to a bowl game in the first place, so they booked vacations and plans for New Year's Eve without even thinking about their Panthers. Remember, this was a team that had won 12 games in the last four seasons, hadn't made a bowl yet in the 90s, and had a brand new head coach. It's almost like telling a fan of a Group of Five team to not book anything for New Year's Day just in case they're in the playoff. 99% of the time, you're laughing at them, because the odds are slim. And remember that Pitt was 4-5 and five at one point in the season. To become bowl eligible, and even have a shot to compete, not only did they have to defeat a ranked Virginia Tech team, but they needed to go on the road to West Virginia and win in a nationally televised game against an opponent that had won the last five meetings against them. Basically, for the entire season, this entire bowl situation for Pitt came as a giant surprise, and there was concern that fans would already have plans. Plus, we have to take into account the distance between Pittsburgh and Memphis compared to Oxford, which is where Ole Miss plays. If you invited Pitt to the game, their fans would have to travel over 771 miles to get to Memphis. It is a 12-hour car ride, so for most people, they would be flying down there, and asking people to take time off, book hotels, make a trip out of it, can be tough, especially for a lot of people in Pittsburgh, where the average income in 1997 was $10,000 below the median for the United States. Compare that to Oxford, which is about 80 miles away, and is a trip that can be done in an hour and a half by car, and it's like night and day in terms of which team will draw the better crowd. And this was important for Liberty Bowl organizers, and this was part of why they tried to keep Pitt out of the game, because attendance had been slagging in recent years. Here's a chart showing the attendance at each of the last nine Liberty Bowls dating back to 1988. Seven of the games drew crowds below 50,000, with three of those games drawing crowds in the 30,000 range. However, you'll notice two outliers, where attendance was above 60,000. That was the 1989 game and the 1991 game. The common denominator for those games that couldn't be said about the other seven? They both involved SEC teams from Mississippi, with the 1989 game featuring Ole Miss and the 1991 game featuring Mississippi State. You get Ole Miss in this game, and your attendance is guaranteed to be good. Pitt? Eh, not so much. And remember, whoever the Liberty Bowl chooses is playing Southern Miss. An all-Mississippi Bowl game? That is a guaranteed sellout for a bowl that has had trouble filling the seats in the last few years. With all of that in mind, the Liberty Bowl organizers came to Pitt and asked them if they could opt out of this game. They asked them if they wanted to risk not playing in a bowl game, or in all likelihood, playing in the Independence Bowl down in Shreveport instead. In other words, 
the Liberty Bowl is set to pit. We're contractually obligated to take you, but we really don't want to. So can you do us a solid and back out of this bowl game so we don't have to take you? Guess what Pitt's response was? Absolutely not. Under no circumstances were they going to switch bowl games. They earned their spot in the Liberty Bowl. Their players were hyped to be playing in the Liberty Bowl specifically, and you're not going to take that away from us. Pitt officials, generally feeling insulted about the whole situation, as if they weren't good enough or worthy to be playing in a bowl game that they earned the right to be in, had some things to say about this entire saga, especially after Liberty Bowl officials played up the possibility of an all-Mississippi bowl game. As Steve Peterson said, there were some discussions with regards to whether we would consider going to a different bowl. My stance all along has been I want to do what's best for our fans, and I thought the Liberty Bowl was the best fit for that. I can tell you any discussions didn't go very far. Basically, Pitt shot the idea down right away. You were going to take us, whether you liked it or not. And it made complete sense as to why Pitt wanted to stay in the Liberty Bowl instead of going to the Independence Bowl. The Liberty Bowl had more prestige. The Liberty Bowl was what Pitt had been aiming for. And the Independence Bowl was all the way in Shreveport, which is even further away than Memphis. And the average person is more inclined to take a trip to Memphis than they are to Shreveport. Good luck getting a lot of Pitt fans to travel to Shreveport, where there are probably not a whole lot of direct flights from Pittsburgh, and where you'll have to travel 1,200 miles or drive about 17 hours if you're a madman. It made no logical or practical sense whatsoever for Pitt to opt out of the Liberty Bowl to play in Shreveport, so I don't think Peterson was losing too much sleep over that decision. Finally, after the failed request to swap bowl games, the Liberty Bowl relented and honored their agreement, even if they didn't want to. They were getting Pitt Southern Miss on New Year's Eve, whether they liked it or not. And unfortunately for Pitt, this entire fiasco with the bowl selection process was a pretty good indicator for how this game would go for them. Because what followed was one of the biggest bloodbaths in Liberty Bowl history. At halftime, it was 14-7 in favor of Southern Miss, so not terrible by any means. By the end of the game, however, the Eagles had won 41-7, outscoring the Panthers 27-0 in the second half. At the time, this was the largest margin of victory in the history of the bowl game, and it wouldn't be until 2013, when Mississippi State defeated Rice by a final score of 44-7, that this margin of victory would be topped. It was an incredibly sour ending to an incredible season for Pitt, considering the circumstances. But if they were looking for a way to prove the bowl organizers wrong for ever downing them, they failed absolutely miserably in that department, because their first trip to the Liberty Bowl was a complete bust both on and off the field. And to date, the Panthers have never returned to that bowl game, and likely never will return unless conference affiliations change anytime soon. But for the Liberty Bowl and their organizers, they learned a valuable lesson on this day. Don't enter into a contract that you aren't prepared to honor. If you really wanted an SEC team to play in the game so badly, then don't organize a contract with the Big East. Maybe, I don't know, Organize a contract with the SEC. This was entirely your own doing, and even though it didn't work out on the field, Pitt had every right to refuse to accommodate the Liberty Bowl's request, because it would not have been fair to Pitt, their fans, and their players whatsoever. Because in 1997, the Liberty Bowl was trying their hardest to steal a spot away from the team that played in the Steel City. Get your official Jaguar Gear 9 merchandise by going to jg9shop.com, and be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, and subscribe down below if you haven't already, as it helps the channel out a lot. And be sure to check out Twitch every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern for your chance to play NFL trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping get the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. So you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.